those days, um, electronics was moderately dangerous. Valve amplifiers with power supplies that are in several hundred volts, we had some spectacular moments. So when you're young, you can make mistakes. Yeah, I, I remember once building a hectograph, which was, this were the days before copying machines. Whereas with semiconductors, we're typically using voltages around about five volts. In those days, things were powered off the mains and we were trying to um, supply our, our vacuum tubes, our valves, with perhaps 300 volts or so. I know one day I walked out, left the radio running and came back and the whole room was full of smoke. And it took about six months for the smell to go away. And I read in a magazine called Hobbies Illustrated that you could get some glycerine from the chemist, melt it and put it on a pad and then you could write on a bit of paper in this quite good ink and then lie it on the hectograph and then you could print from it. The poor soldering technique on, a, on an earthed floor shed meant that I was quite often stimulated uh, electrically along the way. As I was boiling the wax for the hectograph, it caught a light. And so I took it from the stove across to the sink and turned the tap on. The projects got more and more ambitious, I suppose, as time went on. Tesla coils, all those things irritate all the neighbours with interference when I could have six inch sparks. I built a model of a spark transmitter. The whole thing exploded, it went right up, it completely singed the whole ceiling of the kitchen. Using a car ignition coil and a Morse key and so on, they gave me a prize and a strong warning that I must on no account use this because it would block all the uh, all the local uh, radio receivers. But yeah, you just you just dive in and just pull things apart. And you wouldn't always know what you're doing, but, it, but over time, uh, little bits and pieces would start to gel. Mostly a desperation to find out, you know, what how you did whatever it was you needed to do. The more you dig, the more you find out. After a while, you get to know what question to ask and who to ask. I think, you know, early on I had a big cardboard box and I cut some holes in it and bolted some speakers and hooked them to my mum's cassette player. And I'm like, wow, look at this, I've got my own, you know, speaker thing. I mean, it looked atrocious when you think about it. Yeah, well, part of my education in electronics started really back in uh, primary school. And my dad used to uh, take me to the old uh, sort of radio warehouse of uh, refuse of old RF gear from DSTO, which was the Defence Department down near uh, Adelaide. We even did it at school. It was part of a science course that you'd actually build up an electronic device. I had a few friends who were into electronics at the time, and so we used to muck around with it just after hours. I had some very supportive teachers, which was really good. Now I started to fiddle with the TV out in the lounge room while no one was looking. And every uh, couple of weeks or so I'd get myself a black tube TV, which I'd happily get to pull apart and you know, blow things up and rip parts out, which was really exciting. I found I could pick up taxis and all sorts of things on the TV set. You get to have a, an understanding of how things are put together, which was really quite nice. So, um, yeah, so I remember that quite fondly. It was just like being bitten by a bug and, and uh, being interested in, in a hobby, and I just kept it up all the time through high school and, and later on. So I was learning electronics by being there uh, out of need um, and by my own desire to learn about how to make stuff that I thought I wanted to use. I think the hacker mentality is if you see, if you see something you, you get fascinated about it, you just want to pull it apart and see how it works and uh, if possible put it together in a diff different way and make it do something different. And so I used to see all of these little things that I wanted to do and I would try to puzzle out how to solve that problem and that was really what got me into it. That, that was probably the real draw for me. It was it, just that whole you know, soup to nuts experience. I wanted to build FM microphones because I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, the concept of having your own little radio station, I mean, how amazing is that, picking it up on the, on the radio? Kits would help. We'd go along to a, a Dick Smith store and they'd have a number of kits on the, on, on the walls. It was magazines, it was buying kits, there was a computer club. Yeah, these are, these are all kits. In those days, you could get kits from magazines. One of the main things with building kits was that uh, it allowed you to get, especially test gear, at very low cost. Hopefully your father would teach you how to solder properly so you wouldn't wreck the PC board. Test gear was expensive uh, back in those days, so if you could build your own power our supply, for example, um, from a kit, it was it was much cheaper and it was very rewarding. I ended up building a few things that were practical. But everyone wanted to build that stupid Knight Rider light thing. Remember that? Oh, God. A few things that were nefarious. Oh, I want to build that Knight Rider thing with a light. I'm like, what are you going to do with that? I mean, like bugs and you know, recording devices and things like that. You know, you're going to get bashed, you know, like, I just like, what are you going to put that on your car? It's going to look terrible, like really bad, you know. Ended up selling quite a few of those to other students. <laughs> you know, we even put a water pistol in front of the car and touched the wires of a squirt water out the front so we'd 
go up to the, you know, the intersection and be squirting water out the front of people who are like looking for the rain, you know, just crazy stupid stuff, you know. There's nothing worse than a bunch of electronics kids with, you know, bored young electronics kids who just get up to mischief, you know, it's pretty funny.